Hi everyone, my name is Pranamya, and today I'm going to be talking to you and reading to you a story by Naomi Shihab Nye called Museum. Before I talk to you about the story, I'll read you a little bit about Naomi. Naomi is an accomplished writer of poetry, fiction, and prose, but she's most famous for her poetry. She normally only writes poetry, but she has written a few short stories, like Museum. Museum is all about embarrassment, and as the AmericanArt.edu website calls it, a tale of art, life, and everything in between. In the story, one of the main lessons that we learn is to have gratitude for what you have in life. We're blind to the wonderful things we get. For example, in this story, the teenage girl realizes that she should be grateful for the amazing things that her parents have given her. They have such great taste, and she lives in such a beautiful home that someone mistook it for a museum. Now, I don't want to spoil the story too much, so let's get started. But before we do, remember to like, subscribe, and if you like the story, leave a comment down below. And... Make sure to check out Fish Cheeks and Two Kinds by Amy Tan, who relates a lot of her writings as a Chinese-American, like Naomi relates her poetry and writing as an Arab-American. I hope you enjoy the story. I was 17 and my family had just moved to San Antonio. A local magazine featured an alluring article about a magazine called The McNay, an old mansion once the home of a eccentric, many times married watercolorist named Marion Coolger McNay. She had deeded it to the community to become a museum upon her death. I asked my friend Sally, who drove a cute little convertible and had moved to Texas a year before we did, if she wanted to go there. Sally said, sure. She was a good friend that way. We had made up a few words in our own language and could dissolve into laughter just by saying them. Our mothers thought we were a bit odd. On a sunny Saturday afternoon, we drove over to Broadway. Sally asked, do you have the address of this place? No, I said. Just drive very slowly and I'll recognize it. There was a picture in this magazine. I peered in both directions and pointed, saying, There, 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 there it is, pull in. The parking lot under some palm trees was pretty empty. We entered excited. The museum was free. Right away, the spirit of the arched doors, carved window frames, and elegant artwork overtook us. Sally went left. I went right. A group of people seated in some chairs in the lobby stopped talking and stared at us. May I help you? A man said. No, I said. We're fine. I didn't like to talk to people in museums. Tours and Dawson's got on my nerves. What if they talked a long time about a painting you weren't that interested in? I took a deep breath and moved on to another painting. Fireworks over a patio in Mexico, maybe? There weren't very good tags in this museum. In fact, there weren't any. I stood back and gazed. Sally had gone upstairs. The people in the lobby had stopped chatting. They seemed very nosy, keeping their eyes on me with irritating curiosity. What was their problem? I turned down a hallway. Bougainvilleas and azaleas pressed against the windows. Maybe we should have brought a picnic. Where was the Moorish courtyard? I saw some nice sculptures in another room and a small couch. This would be a great place for reading. Above the couch hung a radiant print by Paul Klee, my favorite artist, blues and pinks merging softly in his own wonderful way. I stepped closer. Suddenly, I became aware of a man from the lobby standing behind me in the doorway. Where do you think you are? he asked. I turned sharply. The McNay Art Museum? He smiled, then shook his head. Sorry to tell you, the McNay is three blocks over, on New Broffin Street. Take a right when you get out of our driveway, and then another right. What is this place, I asked, still confused. He said, well, we thought it was our home. My heart jolted. 
I raced past him to the bottom of the staircase and called out, Sally, come down immediately, urgent. I remember being tempted to shout something in our private language, but we didn't have a word for this. Sally came to the top of the stairs, smiling happily, and said, You have to come up here. There's some really good stuff. And there are old beds, too. No, Sally, no, I said, as if she were a dog or a baby. Get down here. Speed it up. This is an emergency. She stepped elegantly down the stairs, as if in a museum trance, looking puzzled. I just couldn't tell her out loud in front of these people what we had done. I actually pushed her toward the front door, waving my hand at the family in the chair, saying, Sorry, oh my God, please forgive us. You have a really nice place. Sally stared at me in the parking lot. When I told her, she covered her mouth and doubled over with laughter, shaking. We were still in their yard. I imagined them inside looking out the window at us. She couldn't believe how long they let us look around without saying anything either. That was really friendly of them. Get in the car, I said sternly. This is mortifying. The real McNay was fabulous, splendid, but we felt a little nervous the whole time we were there. Van Gogh, Picasso, Tamayo. This time, there were tags. This time, we stayed together in case anything else weird happened. We never told anyone. Thirty years later, a nice-looking woman approached me in a public place. Excuse me, she said. I need to ask a strange question. Did you by any chance enter a residence long ago, thinking it was the McNay Museum? Thirty years later, my cheeks still burned. Yes, but how did you know? I never told anyone. That was my home. I was a teenager sitting with my family, talking in the living room. Before you came over, I never realized what a beautiful place I lived in. I never felt lucky before. You thought it was a museum. My feelings changed about my parents after that, too. They had good taste. I have always wanted to thank you. The End